Access Advisory Committee. Oh, it just said it was being recorded. Okay, start um, beginning the Disability Access Advisory Committee meeting for February 9, 2021. And we have five people present from the meeting. Um, Elise Link, um, Marty Smith, Xander Crowley, uh, who else is there? I'm sorry, Tori uh, Dixon and Myra Ross. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm not as quick as I should be. All right, so does anyone have any announcements? No announcements? Okay. Does anyone hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, all right. So the first thing we, under new business, we have a discussion of the roundabout at, or the, no, the intersection at West Pomeroy, Pomeroy and West Street. Um, and I guess I'll just give a little background. The last time we wrote a letter, the committee wrote a letter to the planning department and to Guilford Mooring, I guess, um, exp expressing our concerns about this intersection, making sure that it's done properly because we have some concerns about one that was previously done and that uh, transportation, I mean that uh, pedestrian access has to be the paramount concern. And there was a town council meeting on the 25th, um, at which they had our letter. Um, I made a statement, obviously not on behalf of the committee, but on behalf of me. Um, and uh, the committee was very, very supportive actually of making sure that this uh, intersection um, is done with all attention paid to pedestrian access, which was something that the head of the I don't even know what committee it is. Aaron Hayden is the head of it. He had spoken before me. He said pretty much the same thing. And I said it from an access perspective. And then some really amazing things started to happen. Um, Pat DeAngelis, who is also at this meeting. Sorry that I didn't mention it. Okay. Pat That's is good. our liaison to the, um, the, to the town wow. council. She, sent a letter to me, which she forwarded from a, a person in town whose name I don't know if I can give out, but so I won't unless you tell me I can. Um, uh, a person who is very interested in this kind of thing, who knows a lot about transportation and who uh, she and I started up a long correspondence. Um, she has sent a number of really worthwhile materials to read some of which, I think all of which, the ones I decided were, you were gonna bother with, cause some of them are like 150 pages, are, um, were sent to you. Um, I sent them to Maureen the other day. In the meantime, I also re reached out to some blindness groups because I shouldn't be the one who decides what the right way to build an intersection is. But there are people who actually know about this from a perspective of visually impaired and blind people. And I contacted them. Um, I contacted the woman who is the head of mobility and orientation at the Massachusetts Commission for the Blind. She sent me some materials. Um, I contacted an uh, advocacy group, transportation committee. They sent me some materials. And we have a lot of stuff to deal with. So I sent Maureen all of this and I asked her if she'd set up a meeting for us to talk to the town planner and Guilford Mooring, which she did. So this Thursday at two o'clock, there is a Zoom between Guilford Mooring, Chris Brestrup, Maureen, me, and one or two people from the Commission for the Blind who are gonna talk to them to talk about what visually impaired and blind people actually require to cross streets safely. So a lot of stuff has gone on this woman from the community, whose name I'm not going to mention, has been unbelievable in her result. It you know, would be work. okay to mention her name. It would be fine. It would be okay. Okay. Her name is J Tracy Zafian or Zafian. I don't know how you say it. Do you? Uh, I think it's Zafflin, but I don't know for sure. Okay. 
And I don't um, know whether she's a she or a they. Oh, I don't know that either. Okay. It could be that she is a he. For some reason, I just decided that she was a she. Okay. Um, that is one of those names that could be almost anybody. All right. Um, so anyway, this person, Tracy, has been amazing in what has been sent um, to me um, and things that I've read, you know, and um, there are lots and lots of studies about how to build um, safe intersections, especially if towns are going to use roundabouts, and they date back to as, you know, 2005, 2006. The stuff is not new. Um, there is new stuff, but a lot of the basic stuff and a lot of the research is predates the roundabout that was built at uh, Triangle Street definitely predates all of that. And the stuff that they, um, you know, they didn't really do any of it at Triangle Street. Um, so that's a whole other discussion, but we're trying to make sure that whatever decision they make in this very pedestrian heavy intersection in South Amherst is going to be safe. And so that's really what I have to report. I don't know if anyone had time to read any of the stuff that I sent in the last two days. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to talk about any of it, but that's where the status of this is. And if anybody else would like to go to the meeting, I suppose that would be fine too. Especially Elise, because you are a low vision person. I don't know if you're interested in going to the Zoom on Thursday, but- Actually, I, I think I am. Okay, I would think that we should send Elise uh, in you know the Zoom when we get it. I don't know if we have it, but um, hey. just send it to me, please. I'd like to just listen in. Sure. Just oh, was that Marty? Yes. Okay, Elise and Marty. Sure, I can send you each um, a meeting invite. Um, it seems like it should go to the whole committee, Maureen. And yeah. Well, then I actually to time out. Um, sorry, I got a. Think we can't have here. a quorum there without an officially oh, oh, announced see, meeting. Yeah. yeah, so we can have three. We can have three. What time is the meeting? I'm here too. Two o'clock. Hi, Sarah. Hi. We have seven people on the committee, so we could have three of the of the people from this committee. And I just thought Elise has a specific interest because she's a low vision person. Um, and sure. perhaps somebody who uses, um, you know, a wheelchair, a scooter, I, I don't know. But I mean, this isn't the only meeting. This one is about visual impairment. And I got involved in it because they just didn't deal with it the first time they built a pedestrian heavy um, uh, roundabout. And I just decided that they're not going to do it again without really looking into what they should be doing. So. Um, and they, they are on such a fast track with this that it's a little scary. Um, they have a grant, I guess it runs out or something. Yeah, you know so, so um, I would like to give, um, to touch on that, Myra, if you wouldn't mind. So, sure. you know, th this project is being funded through a mass works grant. Um, the town was awarded this $1.2 million project in the fall of 2020 to, uh, provide uh, vehicular and pedestrian improvements at the intersection of West, West Street and Pomeroy and West Pomeroy Lane, lanes. Um, the town, uh, as you said, did give a presentation to the town council um, and no design has been finalized and won't be uh, finalized until uh, this June. So um, the D the, besides the town council, no committees have um, had a chance to review um, this because um, there's been nothing to uh, respond to. Um, the, the, the town engineer and the, the DPW um, are right now gathering data um, and uh, and uh, going through sort of um, different uh, design alternatives. The town council will take action on the implementation improvements. Um, so they will be uh, approving the design um, expected in June. And so um, as- There is something they have to approve in May. 
Okay, I'm looking at the uh, project timeline that was uh, given to the as part of the presentation that was provided on the June 25th meeting. Um, and so, uh, and so there will be uh, formal opportunities for uh, Amherst uh, members of the public and committees to provide comments um, through the, um, uh, uh, the town council, uh, through the uh, transportation advisory committee meetings, um, which is um, their acronym for that is uh, the TAC and the, the TSO, which I believe is a subcommittee of the town council. Um, and so I will be, uh, you know, working with Christine Brestrup, the planning director, to keep track of when these meetings are happening and when there are materials uh, given. Um, uh, so basically right now, there really isn't a lot of information about this project other than saying the town has been granted this has been granted this funding to to provide uh, internet inter intersection improvements but again there has mo been um, zero decisions about about what the design uh, would include so I think this is a great opportunity for the DAAC to um, get involved as you are and you're being very proactive which is wonderful and um, but I just want to make it known there's you know there has been no decisions made there's nothing you know happening that 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 we should be alarmed with this is just this is the process and so as as meetings are um, as more information is provided and meetings are um, addressing this project uh, I'll certainly keep keep this committee informed. Can I make a quick observation about quorum? Yeah. Anybody on the committee can attend as an attendee to the meeting that you're setting up with Gilbert. Oh, you're right, yes. you're right, okay. And so I think that if those of you who can, that would be extremely valuable. And then you're right that they, it's not a deliberation and if you have participant repre representatives, that's fine. And then Maureen will, they'll be in the meeting from the start. The other people would be attendees. They wouldn't be speaking or um, coming forward, but they would be, you'd be listening. And sometimes it's better to get all that firsthand. Perfect, okay. Sure. I, that I just, being said, Pat, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Myra. Let me speak with the planning director, um, who is the one that has scheduled this meeting. Um, I, so I don't want to speak on behalf of um, the the DPW it's superintendent. A public, it's a public meeting, so it's subject to open meeting law, which means people can attend. And attending doesn't give you the right to participate in the meeting as an active person questioning Guilford or anything else, but it does give you the ability to listen to all aspects. It's like what Marty said, oh, I think I don't need to be representative of the committee. I, I just want to listen. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a public meeting. They have to have it open. So one thing I want to say is that in that report you're looking at with the timeline, Maureen, there is nothing in there that mentions the DAAC. So whoever put it together didn't even think to bring it to the DAAC, which someone on the town council pointed out, and I wish I remembered who, um, that, that it's not, that we're not even mentioned on that um, memo for the groups that need to see it. And I think at the, when it was brought up, Guilford Mooring said, well, you know, that it would be once there's a design, it'll go to the DAAC. And someone else on the town council said, it's too late then. Yeah, um, and yeah, you can remember the people better than I can, Pat. I didn't take notes. But as I said, I did really appreciate the support of this committee at the D at the town council. And I really did appreciate that. I'm, I'm just a little wary because they did it once without looking into a lot of information that transportation professionals should know and should know to look at. And they didn't. And so the fact that they didn't even put the DAAC on the list on the timeline for this project until the town council said we need to be there is one of the things that makes me a little nervous. And so that's why I got all those people involved so that the expertise from people who are experts in this field would actually have, a, have some input um, in that, that would have to be heard. 
so anyway, that's I just wanted to give the the committee a little bit of background about that. But if you look at that timeline, the DAAC isn't on it. And actually, the somebody on the um, town council didn't make a motion to include the DAAC. So technically, the DAAC still isn't on it, although it was agreed by the group there, I think that the DAAC should be on it. Is that about right, Pat? Yes. Hey, Myra, uh, yes. that's a great point you're bringing up. I wonder if uh, the town uh, manager should be made aware of this. The designs are coming to us after the oh. tax. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know if it, you know, when, you know, I, I mean, I think Guilford Moring's thing was, I am going to, you know, work with the people, I'm going to develop it, and then I'll bring it to the DAAC. Um, and, you know, some of the materials, like for the, um, that Tracy sent me, uh, sent me the minutes from the meeting from the DAAC from 2016, when the roundabout in town was approved. Um, not everything that the DAAC requested at that meeting even happened um, in that roundabout. So um, I think I think it's I think we need to be a whole lot more careful and a whole lot more open because yes, it's true. There is a lot of data about uh, intersections that have roundabouts. They do have a lower accident rate. Um, they do have cars moving and fewer backups. There are a lot of advantages to, to roundabouts and they're a lot cheaper to build because they don't have much electronics in them, if any, like the one in town doesn't have any. Um, but to make them safe, they need to have a lot of other things and especially there because there are school kids that are going to cross there. So whatever they build there has to be safe. Aaron Hayden said it. And I think from our perspective, how quickly you can cross the street, uh, you know, how you can get around whatever they're going to build, depending on what your disability is. And if you happen to be an eight-year-old kid who doesn't have the best judgment, all those things have to be taken into consideration. Anyway, so that's why I brought it up. And um, Pat, if you think we can all go to the meeting Tuesday, uh, Thursday, that's great. It's two o'clock. I don't know how to... Um, how to set that up. Uh, again, I will talk to the, the planning director and I will, uh, if uh, she feels that that's fine, I will um, certainly forward the meeting invite with the Zoom information to Elise and Marty and to okay. whomever else wants to attend. Tori had her hand raised. I just wanted to also mention that there's Pomeroy Lane Cooperative that is right behind there. So there are people there that are living there with disabilities. So that needs to be kept in mind as well. And they cross yeah. all the time That's Excellent. Um, to get to the shops. And Tori, what was the name of that again? I'm sorry. It's Pomeroy Lane Cooperative. Pomeroy Lane Cooperative. Sorry, I'm writing this down. 34 Pomeroy Lane. Yeah. <laughs> Tori and I met. <laughs> so this is um, this is really good. I really think this committee needs to have a bigger voice in it than the plan was going to have. So. Um, you know, and if we don't, it's built and then it's too late. So, right, we have to do something. And we don't want to be there just for a rubber stamp. Correct. Right. You know? Yeah. So, um, I don't know if anybody wants to say anything else about it or should we move on to the next item? Move on. Okay. So the other thing is about the, um, the, the, oh my God, the self-assessment. Um, and Maureen very kindly, uh, I, I asked her to send us materials and they are very, very, very detailed. Um, I didn't read all of them. I don't know if any of you did, but I read some of them. Um, and it's, uh, it's 
it's quite interesting. And I don't know, Maureen, you said you were not going to be prepared to make a presentation today because it was something you couldn't do. So I'm not going to put you on the spot for it. But I don't know if I don't know if you want to say anything brief. Sure. Or... Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I will say that uh, I sent that email, and unfortunately, I I got some sort of email from Outlook saying that a few of the emails didn't go through or they were still trying to go through. I think it might've been Tori's email. Um, did everyone get this email? It was sent on Saturday morning and it had, it had the um, transition plan report and it had the accessibility audits for the bank center and for um, a few uh, downtown, um, a few public rights of ways um, located in downtown Amherst, like Amity Street and East Pleasant Street and Main Street. Did folks get this? Yes. You did. Yes. The, the, so the documents, as, as Myra said, are very large. Um, and so, uh, I, so unfortunately, I am working on a couple deadlines that I've never had this scenario before, but I have three I had three things that uh, major things that were due today. So I unfortunately had to say I need to take a pause on creating a formal presentation on, on this project until next time. But I can certainly talk about this at agnosium um, without a formal presentation. So um, um, if memory serves me, the, uh, the consultants came to one of the DAC meetings um, I feel maybe in September, October, something like that. And they gave a presentation to the committee about the project of, uh, that walked you through the process of explaining uh, the process and up until that moment, uh, which is uh, getting into um, talking about the that they performed on-site audits of various ta uh, town facilities in Amherst, including buildings, parks, trails, and a sample of uh, streets in downtown Amherst. And um, they also provided uh, surveys to uh, individuals uh, and to town, town of Amherst employees, as well as organizations that are geared towards working with uh, uh, with uh, with people with disabilities, but it it, it could have um, you know which is applicable to really any any sort of organization, um, and um, and then they also looked at um, the very the existing but very outdated transition plan, which was done I believe back in the early 1990s. And, um, and so with all these sorts of information using surveys, existing documents and the um, uh, in the field audits, uh, they were able to provide um, their um, overall transition plan. And that gets into um, the website, it gets into uh, public spaces, it gets into programs, processes, and procedures such as like, you know, hiring employees, um, working with volunteers, and, um, and posting like meeting agendas and, and, and posting all sorts of sort of documents that are, are public documents. Um, and, and then again, they also looked at facilities. So I wanted to give you a sample of of what these accessibility audits look like. And I can certainly pull one up um, if that's helpful uh, for some of you to, to, to look at. Um, and so let me pull up the uh, Bang Center uh, accessibility audit. Bear with me for one moment. So, so uh, unfortunately, Myra and Elise will 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 not be able to see it okay but i can at least just uh describe what what i'm looking at so this is just you know the front cover uh it's a picture of the bang center it says accessibility report it says the date that it was done which was july 17th 2020 and it gives you the address 
and it goes one each page is uh, goes one by one um, assessing items associated with the property that are not ADA compliant. So um, for this uh, page two, it um, the top says banks, community center, um, categories, parking, parking space, accessible signage height, uh, finding the bottom edge of the post mounted signage designating the accessible parking space is not at the required height. Um, they measured, they physically measured there that this was 55, this sign right here, which is a, um, you know, a ADA, uh, it's a, um, a sign that designates the parking space as an ADA parking space. And um, the height of the sign is 55 inches height. Um, their recommendation is to modify the height or replace the post mounted sign designating the accessible parking space. The sign shall be located so that it's not, that it cannot be obscured by a vehicle parked in the space. Um, recommendation at least 60 inches. So they're saying, you know, either, um, you know, modify the height by or replacing it bottom line they're saying make this sign higher um and that it's it's not compliant by five inches and then they um the next uh on this keeping with this page they also provide an estimated cost so to modify or replace the post mounted sign is approximately 158 dollars and then they provide code references so this is uh the Massachusetts AAAB uh, section 23.6 uh, and then ADA standards uh, 502 and 502.6. Um, and then um, it, this is a record number um, that um, just um, if you, um, this is just a, a record number um, that is associated with this exact Com, uh, uh, non compliancy And so if you go through each page of, of this 193 page document, this is a, a, a perfect snapshot of what it looks like um, is that it, 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 it provides you the finding of, of a non-compliant item uh, in relation to a town of Amherst facility. Uh, and then um, they'll give you a measurement um, and then they will provide a recommendation of fixing the issue uh, with a recommended, you know, if, if, if it's in regards of, of um, distance, they'll give you, a, um, you know, here that says at least 60 inches high, and then that will give you an estimated cost, and then they'll give you a code reference to state and federal regulations, and then a record number, and then they have a photograph. And so it goes um, page by page. Um, they had an issue. The next page gets into the aisle, the access aisle width. Um, it's this this part, the access aisle that I'm hovering with my mouse here, uh, is showing the area. And here you'll see that they. Um, in reality, this is 94 inches wide. To be compliant, it should be 96 inches. And so as you go through this, um, go through these um, accessibility reports for each of the facilities, you'll notice that some, um, you, you can begin to sort of come up with a priority list. So in my, you know, in my opinion, and, and this would be really important to get your, your uh, recommendations and feedback is, is a difference of two inches, uh, a, high, a high priority of fixing immediately, or is it something that is, you know, very drastically out of compliance? So the one thing that the consultants did not provide, which it is what it is, um, is that they did not prioritize the list of things that should be fixed. And so that is something that I and other departments, and uh, I would certainly say this com committee, um, can start looking at these 
and coming up with, uh, you know, a list of w what are of the things that have been identified that are non-compliant. What should be the things that should be fixed immediately, or perhaps, you know, in the in the next year, or the next five years, or the next ten years, and. Um, there are things that, uh, so then there are things that uh, here uh, to widen the, the width, theoretically, this would cost $250. I don't, sh I'm not sure if that's the reality because if you widen this aisle, then you're going to, there will be a domino effect. Well, wh what will happen to the parking space and then the parking space after that and the parking space after that. So then you're thinking, well, this one little item may actually have uh, a more financial impact um, or, and design um, impact. Um, so uh, let's see here. Um, as I've said in, multi in previous meetings, I have, me and other um, planning staff members have been uh, um, referencing these accessibility reports from the moment they were provided to us. Um, so, for instance, the, the very specifically the Bang Center, um, we just applied for a, a, a mass, a mass Department of Transportation mass dot grant just uh, a couple weeks ago that will actually uh, um, not address this parking, but will address the sidewalk that's behind this parking, um, and we reference this document for other uh, components that are part of the grant. And there have been other grants that we have successfully have been granted in the last six months that we've referenced um, in our grant application. So this has already been very, very useful for the planning department staff. So uh, you, you told us you applied for a grant for Kellogg Street in September, October, I forget. You had a, a earlier in the fall and it was supposed to have been decided in December that's probably one of the things you referenced this for, right? It was, yes. Unfortunately, we did not get the grant. We didn't get the grant. No, oh, and okay. um, you know, the Mass Office of Disability only has a certain amount of money and you know, Amherst was given a grant the year previous um, that we're still trying to uh, finish and we need to finish by the end of this June. So perhaps they felt well, who knows? I don't know why we didn't get the grant. It, it could have been that, you know, we already have a grant and that they need to sort of spread spread the money out to communities that haven't received a grant in a in a Can few years. Can you ask us about what the one that they're working on right now is, the old one? Sure, yeah. Uh, let me stop this chair. Give me a minute. I have that. Um, so, um, Give me one second. So the, on behalf of the planning department, I submitted a grant to the Mass Office on Disabilities uh, for a fiscal year 2020 grant that will be uh, include crosswalk replacements um, for uh, two crosswalks, one that will be at North Pleasant at Cow Cowles Lane, which is at Breger's Bagels, and then one at uh, the crosswalk in front of CVS that crosses over to where the old Starbucks used to be located. And then also the, um, the grant will also uh, provide a sidewalk replacement of, it's, it's called Pleasant Walk sidewalk, which is the walkway that's adjacent to the old Starbucks location that connects you to the parking lot behind behind there. It leads you back to the garage, it leads you to the bank center, it leads you to the Clark House, etc. It's full of potholes. It's full of potholes. And so um and so I actually I emailed the town engineer about is there a design for it because the 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 da the daac would love to see that and yep. um and again i can't um he provided me uh images of what it will look like unfortunately myrick won't be able to see it um but uh this is what it will look like this is actually not brick it's mimicked to look like brick and he does provide a description 
um, if I can pull out that email. So bear with me. Uh, let's see here. Let me Looks like one. a crosswalk. <laughs> yeah. So that will be for the crosswalks. And then for the replacement of the walkway that leads you from North Pleasant Street to the parking lot behind, that will just be a cement walkway as it is currently, but without potholes. Um, but let me get his email out. Cement or asphalt? Cement. Okay, cool. Um, bear with me. I had it open, the email where he describes it. Uh, and it's smooth, right? It's not. Yes. Yep. Yep. It'll okay. be smooth. Good. So um, let's see here. So this is what he said in an email. So these items are being replaced relatively in kind, meaning that DPW will be doing it. So there are no, there are not any design plans. There are bid specifications and arc view sketches that spell out what is to be done and how. The only difference with the crosswalks is that they will receive a surface applied product to mimic brick. Uh, ple uh, pleasant walk, pleasant street walk um, that goes, leads you from North Pleasant Street to the parking lot behind Starbucks and all that uh, will be replaced with a cement cement concrete walkway without the diagonal score lines or brick soldier course. The proposed score pattern will be a standard perpendicular score pattern and the concrete will receive a broom finish and sealant. And so when he mentions the arc view sketches, um, that that was, uh, I, I then responded to him and I said, can you send me that? Um, and that was the image that I shared with you just a few moments ago. Um, so that's what they will look like. So it sounds like the crosswalk is a tactile crosswalk and not raised, correct? Just correct. It won't be at, raised. Right. At road level, tactile. That's correct. Right. Okay. Yes, it will be tactile. Yep, and hopefully exactly. it won't fall apart. <laughs> that's that's the hope and I believe um I believe if you're familiar with the crosswalk in front of the Jones library that crosses over on Amity yes that is the exact crosswalk except I think that's raised is that raised yeah, that's raised but, but it's the same material so the crosswalks at CVS and by Brewer's Bagel those won't be raised but they will be the same material used mm -hmm. um, for the Jones Library. And I believe the DPW would like to use those crosswalk specs um, for all crosswalks, specifically in downtown. Um, Elise, just uh, for my design. Contrast there? Wait, what? Is, is that enough visual contrast? I'm asking Elise if it's enough visual um, contrast. Let me pull the email up. Probably uh, just as long as it has the white lines. It does. Oh, wait, they oh. have to be, yeah, the contrast has to be pretty strong. Uh, do you see this, Elise? Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm on the left, on the top left, that's what you're showing me? Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. That's good. Oh, good. Yeah, as long as the color, because the color is different, yes. Yep. Okay, good. Yeah. That's, but, so there's another process question um it turns out that what they were going to do is good um what would have happened if it turned out that what they were going to do was not so good when when would we have found out about it that that's i guess one of the things we need to talk about and it relates to the previous issue um of you know being a rubber stamp as saren put it um it's it true. turns out that what they put out there is good but what can we do as a committee to make sure that we are included to make sure that we're involved before we get to the point where we say, oh no, it's not good. Why didn't you ask us? We would have told you X. Does, it, does anyone on the committee want to weigh in on this? Because it's bothering me. It bothers me too. Yeah. I agree, Myra. That's how I always feel that we put our Yes, go ahead with it after it's too late, just like it happened at the UMass design recently. Mm -hmm. and so I will say for this example, um, they have not put out their uh, request for bid. Um, 
and uh, so there would be time for um, if, if you did today have concerns about this design, um, there there would be an, um, ample time to have that conversation to make um, any needed sort of um, design changes to accommodate uh, your feedback. Once they put out the bid, isn't it too late for us to change anything? No. Without a change order, that's expensive. Although it's an in-house job, so it's not the same thing. But if you're putting out a bid to an outside contractor, anything that isn't in the original bid is a change order. Yeah, so as I said, uh, a bid has not been uh, placed uh, yet. And so um, there would be uh, enough time to change that now. Um, uh, you know, certainly in the field, changes do happen. Um, you know, if it's if it's if it's minor, I I don't think that that's a change order. If if it is substantial, then that would perhaps be a change order. What does it look? What do the curb cuts look like? For the uh, so that we will for the crosswalks at. Brugger Bagel and CVS, the ramps will be uh, redone as well. Well, yeah, I figure they have to be. But what are the what's the design for the curb cut look like? And do you know? I mean, we all have different reasons to care about what curb cuts look like. Um, Saren and Tori have to make sure that they are right for them, and I have to make sure that they're parallel and that they have domes and that I don't end up in the street when I don't know that I'm not. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. But can you see the crosswalks on the picture? Yes. Bear with me for one second. I don't mean the crosswalks. I mean the curb cuts. Uh, let me look again. I don't. I, I didn't see them. Here, it's very gentle. Tori, I feel like there's a tactile strip on the other side of the road. Yeah, there are. Yep, there's tactile strips on both sides. Okay. There are? Yep. Because uh, my dog will, if she doesn't feel something, and if I don't feel something, she'll just keep going. Yeah, no, and, and that would be included uh, with both, with uh, these uh, improvements. So there's no step down, it's just a tactile strip. Correct. Okay. Lori, so, how's Maureen, I have a question about um, I understand that you're saying that this brick like material is flat and it's not brick, but I'm wondering what it would be like in different temperature um, um, in the winter, you know, I would like to know what happens to it when it, it's, it is exposed to extreme temperatures. That's a very good question. I actually re recall having this conversation with Jason Scales, the town engineer, as I was applying for this grant a year plus ago. And they picked this product. So this is a like a trade proprietary material. And they actually have a sample of it at their DPW building. Um, and this specific uh, prior to, uh, proprietary uh, material does very well uh, in, uh, in cold and hot weather with in, in regards of it moving or going up and down um, compared to other uh, products that they have um, been sort of, um, you know, salespeople presenting to them. Okay. What does it do with snow and ice? This product, I believe, if I'm correct, um, is a is a product that they actually stamp. So unlike putting bricks down, it's um, it's not individual pieces. It's a complete substrate that's solid mm. and won't move. You're correct. This is a stamp. It's a stamped product. Yeah, it's it it's not going to give us the problems that we have with uh, the uh, brick. And differential paving. Yeah, and so as I said uh, a moment ago, they have a strip of this 
as their sort of experiment lab at their DPW uh, facility on West Street, I have gone and taken a look at it and they refer to it uh, throughout the, the year uh, as they compare it to other materials. And this um, does very well in hot and cold elements. So um, do, is it also, does it get any more slippery in ice and snow than other things? I don't I believe it does. Okay. okay. I was just going to ask that as well. Because That's a great looks, question. That's a great question. Like I don't it think could it does. Be slippery if it was wet or icy. Marty, am I basically, am I understanding you correctly that it's basically poured concrete that that then got an imprint put in it? It's not a concrete, but it's a, it's a, I believe it's a cementitious material. Okay. Not exactly sure which one they're using, but yes. So it's okay. poured as a strip and then they stamp it. Okay. Thank you. Huh. Yeah, okay. as long as canes and wheelchairs don't get caught in it, you know. It's not it's a smooth. deep stamp. Okay. The indentations are so are so slight that I can't foresee getting stuck in in it even with a or with a with a chair or a cane. Okay. The differentiation of height is very small. Yeah, and again, if um, I'm actually going to try to pull up the Jones Library. Um, uh, I'm going to pull up the Google map street view, which doesn't have the new crosswalk. Never mind. It doesn't, um, it hasn't been updated, but let me, let me play around with it. Maybe from different angles. It'll... Nope. It doesn't have it, but if you are familiar with uh, that crosswalk, I, yeah. I, I've been told that that, that um, crosswalk also has that same exact treatment. Oh, okay. So are there yeah. any other projects that are going to be built in the near future um, that we might want to know about? Sure. Uh, hold on a second. Um, so the, the DAAC did uh, review the redevelopment, redevelopment? development of Kendrick Park, which includes a playground. Um, I believe that, believe the committee reviewed that in the last year or so. Uh, memory is la lapsing me. Um, and so that is beginning construction now. Uh, well, probably not today with the snow, but um, they're prepared. They have been preparing the site for the walkways and the playgrounds and the sitting areas. And um, that project will really, you know, get going in the spring. Um, obviously the Pomeroy Village intersection project. Let's see here. Hmm. Uh, the North Common. Um, I believe oh, yeah. that, I believe that did originally go through the DAAC uh, like a year, uh, two years ago for review. However, uh, you know, that I, th that's been a lot of touch and go of whether that's going to be acted on in the near future or if it will be um, revised. So my the town counselors sent out a questionnaire about it just this week um, to find out what we want to do. They have, they're down to two designs. Apparently the council is considering two designs, but once they select if they want it to be a parking lot or if they want it to have be all grass or what they want, um, we absolutely have to be involved in it because we need to make sure that everything they do is gonna be accessible with no, you know, um, parking meters situated in the middle of the sidewalk such that people can't get around them with chairs and no shrubbery along the side of the street such that if you cross the street and you veer off if you're a blind person that you don't end up hitting all the trees and ending up standing in the street with all the traffic but I mean all the shrubbery so there there are things that this committee needs to needs to know you know as soon as the town council decides what they want to put there then not after the design is created, but before the design is created, we need to talk about it. Do you know, do you know what's gonna happen with that, Pat? Did, have you sent out the same questionnaire to your 
people? No, I have not sent out that questionnaire. We have a district two meeting this week um, uh -huh. where it's gonna come up. Um, and no, there's not been any reaching out to this committee and I apologize for not noticing that. Well, oh. I mean, it, they're not ready to come to this committee yet. I mean, that's not an apology needed. That one is, uh, you know, I, I can send you the link that was sent to us that would be um, helpful for district four, but it's like there's a plan A and a plan B and we're supposed to vote on which one we think is better. And they're very, very, very basic. It's not anything near anything. They're just trying to decide if we want to have parking there or if we want to have grass there. I mean, essentially that's what it is. And, um, you know, people are going to have to decide, but as soon as you as a council decide what you want to put there, then we need to be involved in it to make sure that the perimeter of it is accessible because right now you, the walk along that uh, on Main Street there on the side of the parking lot. I don't know. Can you do that in a wheelchair? I don't think you can. It would be valuable, I think, if the committee would write a letter to the council about those issues around North Common because um, and you know, saying that it's coming out of looking at the two designs, but these are questions that we would like to be um, have influence in responding to. I think you should really send something to the council. Okay. Anybody Myra, want to write it? it? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. What? Anybody want to write it? <laughs> well. <I didn't. laughs> I can write it. Um, I actually wrote it on the form that I already sent in, but I have to rewrite it because I don't think I can reclaim it. Um, Myra, I believe Xander has raised oh, his hand. Did you? Oh, okay. Yeah. This is a sort of unrelated question. This is an unrelated question, but it seems relevant and maybe you guys know the answers and I just don't. How? So last night there was an apparently an emergency town meeting related to the UMass disaster. Mm -hmm. um, but I only found out about it because a faculty member and I were talking about the issue and he mentioned it. How do people find out about things like emergency town meetings? They're posted. They Go ahead. You have to sign up for, you can get emails. There's this thing. Um, I can walk you through it, if the notify Yeah, me. You, you can get as many emails on as many topics from the town as you want. Somehow I didn't get that one either, but I get a lot of them. Oh. Um, yeah, and, oh, sorry, continue. Go ahead. I was gonna say, uh, uh, Xander, I can, I can ho hopefully help find, uh, help, okay. I can hopefully I, walk I, you I, through that, uh, the notify me process if you um, need that. Um, and so as Myra said, um, you can, so I, I, let me go back to the main page. So if you're on the main page of the town of Amherst website, and this is top, then you scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. If you go to this calendar, if you click on view all events, uh, you can select uh, this button here called notify oh, okay. me. It might be listed in a more obvious place, but okay. this is just how I know where it is. Thank you. And my recollection is, is I might be wrong, but my recollection is if you check them, that means you don't want them. And okay. of course we did it the other way. So we ended up getting everything. We had to redo the whole thing. You might want to, it wasn't really clear somehow we messed it up more than okay. once. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> Thank you. I just, yeah. I know that the issues that they were talking about last night are relevant to the communities that that this committee serves yep. um and because i've been working with other groups trying to get the state department of health to change their vaccine um recommendations so that people with disabilities are higher up on the lists so people like me who don't have a, a disability that's listed on the cdc list of affected disabilities, which definitely has high risk for blood clots, will get out of the last, because I'm currently in the last available category. Please. And should be in the one of the higher categories. Um, and so it was just, I just wondered how to get that information. Thank you. 
appreciate it. You, you count as a person with one comorbid, right? But you're yes. young, so you don't count as two. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't count as two. Uh, I've thought this for a long time. It doesn't so much pertain to me, but blind people have to touch everything. And mm -hmm. blind people have to get, you know, yes. really near people. And blind people should, especially blind people who live alone, who go mm -hmm. out and do their own things all the time, they're, I think, in a lot of danger. And I think yeah, they absolutely. Think they're, they're not, they're not on the list either as important. Um, the conversation that we've, we've been having, the group that I'm part of that we've been having is, it doesn't matter if the care, if personal care attendants get vaccinated, if the disabled person is not vaccinated. Because oh, yeah. How ironic personal care attendants can bring it into their home and then they're at risk. So, um, right. as we sort of move into more vaccine, vaccines and that kind of thing, it seems like it's something that, that this committee should be paying attention to how that's coming together and what's going on. Xander, do you want to write? Be, it's going to become an access problem three months from now. I don't know how the committee feels about that, but I'd be willing to entertain a motion that we take a stand on this. And then Xander, you probably have enough written material that yeah. you could write a letter and send it uh, to Maureen she can send it out to us for approval probably before the next DAAC because this is very timely right now. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, so I think, I don't know if you're, if the scope of yours is just about people who use chairs and have a higher incidence of blood clots, or if it's about people with all kinds of disabilities with all kinds of reasons, yep. but you're absolutely right. Does anybody want to make a motion about that? Can I make the motion or is that not? Yeah, you can make uh, it. I'll make the motion. This is okay, Tori. Tori. I'll make the motion. This is Elise. So, I'll second it. So you're I'll moving the that the committee, you're moving that the DAAC send a letter to mm -hmm. the State Department of Public Health, right? Uh, mm -hmm. About the needs of people with disabilities to be vaccinated as quickly as possible, right? Yeah. That's the motion. Yes, I believe. Okay. Maureen, I will but, send you something as soon as I have it together. It should be soon. Excellent. Sure. And at the following meeting, the uh, you know, obviously I, I'll email it to everyone. And at the next meeting, um, everyone can review it. And um, I think we need it. to do it before that. Okay. That's why I, I would hope you can send it around and get approval from the committee individually to send it out because another month from now is not what we need. Sure, I understand. Okay, that's fine. And it wouldn't hurt to CC the governor on it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> send it to the yeah. health department, but CC and, the um, and to Joe Comerford and Mindy Dom, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, if you can touch on the reasons, the health, you know, that, that it, you know, if you think about it from the perspective of people with, a lot of different kinds of disabilities. Um, Absolutely. Uh, that would be really helpful. Great, thank Absolutely. you. Do we know okay, if cool. uh, Stavros uh, or if any organizations such as Stavros are writing letters similar to this? Good question. They should be. You know, Tori? The Tori not, you know? That I'm, not that I'm aware of right now. I, um, I know that they're in conversation with our employees and where people fit in um, as an employee. So the group of people that I'm are not all, but some of them are former Stavros staff. Okay. Okay, so that's great. All right. So uh, but somebody remind me what letter I agreed to write. Oh, about the <laughs> North Common. The North Common, right, okay. Where, where is, right. the, I have no sense of direction and I'm a New Englander who doesn't know street names. What, what are you talking, what North Common are you talking about? I know, about? it's very confusing. So it, it's actually, it's a parking lot in front of Town Hall, essentially. Thank you. Yeah. All the it's, way down to Spring. Yeah. I just, it's, 
I'm a New Englander. People say street names and I'm like, I have no idea. What the only reason about. I know it all is because our town counselors sent us this questionnaire that I did four days ago. Otherwise, I wouldn't remember it either. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's the north part of the town common. Got it. It comes yeah. from the bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. It does get confusing. I, I have to take a few minutes of your time just uh, to uh, tell you about something that happened. We had our I'm a member of District 5 and our commissioners organized this meeting with uh, District 5 people. And uh, it was a two hour long meeting. After the first half hour, our web meeting was hijacked. Two guys oh. entered into our meeting and they said, your meeting is being hijacked right now. And we have your names, IT addresses and everything. And there was all uh, silence and uh, I left the meeting. And then there were a couple of two people I know that was in that meeting and we chatted among us. And um, we just learned that this is something that is happening quite a bit. And at the bottom on the chat box, one person that left the meeting, she knows, noticed there were lots of racial slurs there. Oof. How about that? This is happening at kind of a town meeting in Amherst. Yeah, unfortunately, um, there's been what they call Zoom bombers um, hijacking meetings all across the country, if not the world. And uh, unfortunately, the town of Amherst um, meetings, committee meetings, board meetings have been a victim of it as well. Our IT department has put um, a lot of controls on, on, the, on the Zoom program that I'm using. So for instance, we're not able to use the chat feature and perhaps some other features that I can't think of. And that's why out of abundance of caution at the beginning of these meetings, um, occasionally I see a bunch of random names that are attending and they keep on hitting the raise their hand feature. And some of their names are, you know, just typical names and some are kind of mm, seem a little fishy. So um, earlier, I think before Saren, you got on, right before you got on, I think we might have had a Zoom bomber. And um, at the beginning of these meetings, I have made announcements that if you would like to talk and you keep on raising your hand, uh, you'll have to wait towards the end of the meeting when we have our public comment period. And that usually, um, usually uh, inspires them to move on to the next uh, meeting to interrupt. <laughs> So, scary times, um, you know. No, that's sad. All right, we have so many minutes to do. Um, September minutes. Anybody have uh, any corrections uh, or additions? I sent you a couple, Maureen. One is like my name is spelled wrong, and I forget. Yep. I sent them. So, if you could fix those things. But does anybody have any other ones? Or for September? Uh, whatever date that was. Uh, it's September 22nd, I believe. Okay, whatever it was. Anybody have any quest, uh, corrections, additions, anything about those minutes? All right, I need a motion to accept. Well, let's do it all at once. How about yeah. uh, October? Um, did somebody say yeah? Yeah, I have one thing, and I'm not sure whether it's the September or the October, but um, when I'm referred in the meeting, you got my name and everything right. I would like, um, instead of seeing I dog, I would like her to be referred to as guide dog. Yep, I wrote that to Maureen too. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, yep, thank okay. you for that. Uh, yes. Guide dog, yep. Yep. And yep. Um, the other, anybody else have any corrections on October? Nope. Okay, how about November? Nope. 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 Okay, all the corrections that I have, I emailed to Maureen. Um, so anybody want to give make a motion about the accepting all those minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the September, October, and November minutes. Second from someone? 
I second, Elise. Okay, so we need a roll call on that. Um, so you want to call it, Maureen, or do people? Oh, oh yeah, sure. Give, uh, okay. I can do it. Yep. Okay. Uh, Myra. Yes. Xander. Aye. Uh, Saren. Yes. Tori. Yes. Marty. Abstain. I wasn't on the committee. Ooh. Okay. Good. Good. Good, uh, good call there. Call. Elise. <laughs> yes. And I guess that's it. Thank you. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Right. The only Great. person who ended up missing is Ruth. Remember at the beginning you said that wasn't Saren wasn't present. Yeah. So you probably have to. Yeah, I'll fix that. that. No, you took. Okay. Um, any. Okay. So we have. I think we covered everything. So we're going to be um, waiting for Xander's letter about um, about health, about the vaccinations to come through Maureen as soon as possible. Um, oh, and I forgot to ask about whether the state AB had ever responded to your letter. They haven't responded yet. Um, maybe I'll give them a phone call. <laughs> So I, I emailed them about two things. And the two things are, one is about what is the process for um, holding public hearings and, um, you know, time limits, stuff like that. Um, as I s cite in the email that often the DAAC receives the variance requests a week or two prior to the M-A-A-B hearing, and sometimes, uh, you know, it's even just a few days before their hearing, and uh, we would want some clarification on that, and is there sort of room to, uh, you know, ex postpone their public hearing so there is enough time for this committee to provide comments, um, and then the other thing was oh oh and the other thing was about the uh the section in the maab about continuous rare rare railings on both yeah. sides of a staircase and that perhaps they don't need to provide comment on that just the acknowledgement um but uh it would be uh, very useful to hear what you know are there state regulations that get into uh, public hearing, uh, public hearings for variance requests through the MAAB. Thank you very much. Thanks for sending that. Or, um, yeah, and then we, um, we can see what we need to do about them because they need to involve us. They need to not make decisions before they hear from us on things that we are supposed to have input into. Yeah, I believe uh, Marty might be raising her hand and also Tori. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to go back to talk about the um, transition plan document you sent out. Um, I read the Bang Center very carefully. And one thing I, because I wasn't involved in it, but what are they using as a cost estimation tool? That's a great question. Uh, I would... It, it, it's either spelled out in their overall report or I would have to email them directly. They have a... Um, I don't I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Exact, but I think there's a, you can't take those reports and add up all those dollars and think that's gonna get you anything. Because there's, I was looking at, at each of the specific um, problems. And one of them was, this was the one that struck me so um, just in the face, were the ones about the elevator in the bank center. Yep, yep. That, I mean, a elevator technician alone is $425 an hour. You can't tell me you're going to raise and replace the control panels for $800. Yeah. It's not even in the realm of possibility. Yeah, I, I agree. I, yeah, I mean, I, I've spoken with our town engineer and they've already, especially in context of applying for these grants where we need to include a budget and they've 
told me right off the bat that their cost estimates are are Correct. inaccurate. As so we're not we're not going to refer to them. Good. As long as everybody understands, because in the parking lot they talk about uh, fixing the slope of one of the accessible parking spaces. Well, that's repaving the entire lot, not just for that right. little, you know, right. four hundred square feet. Yep. It's because you've got to redo the drainage on the whole. Yeah. Thing. Yeah, you know, it's no, just, it's... there's a lot of collateral damage. And this is a problem because I've done these reports before and that's just a standard problem with them. How do you do it? How do you contain it? And yeah. there's actually a way. So they gave me this interactive uh, software program, which is pretty cool. Um, so I, I log into this software and I can see all the, 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 the compliance is listed mm -hmm. and um, and then I can export it into Excel, yep. PDF, maybe other ways. Um, for the sidewalks and the roads, I can export that into ArcGIS, CAD, and Google Earth. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a way to, uh, when exporting it to PDF, I can um, indicate to just remove the cost estimates. Okay. Uh, just because it could be alarming to folks of like either one way or the other of like yeah people will think it's it's much cheaper yeah when in fact it's you know probably at least four times as much yeah yeah well and, and you look at the one with the, the stoplights i read the intersection one uh pretty carefully about main street and pleasant and you know, this nine hundred dollars is one hundred and fifty, and you're like, no, it isn't. You have to rip the whole thing apart. So thank you for that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Thank okay. you. A new, stop, a new stoplight, a thousand, but fourteen hundred dollars. You know, like I don't think so. No. <laughs> so you can't get the traffic engineers out there for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I'm planning to do, and I I wanted to do this when I sent you the email on Saturday morning. Um, Unfortunately, I had to work on the weekend. Um, but um, what I was going to say was I wanted to, um, as you've noticed, these documents are very large. And so I would like to give you copies to each of the facilities. So at your leisure or over time when the town, you know, is you know, maybe making renovations to town hall or making renovations to the Munson Library or or you are just curious, um, I would like to give you copies to each of the uh, facility um, accessibility audits reports. And so I will, um, what, what will need to happen is I am going to provide you a link and that will give you access to all the documents and it's through what's called the OneDrive and okay. it's a cloud-based um, I don't know, email sharing uh, mm -hmm. program. So the individual facility audits, I believe will not be put on the town website, but the overall plan will be provided on the website. Um, That's good. So yep. some of it, you're saying some of it, it will be like when they renovate town hall, this is what they need to look at. And some of it will be like, we'll look at them and say, whoa, that's one of those things that might need to go on capital planning as one of the things that you said a couple months ago, we're going to get a, a you know an accessibility line on the capital planning budget, and so even if they're not planning a renovation to X, Y, or Z, we think it's so important that they need to do it. Exactly. So that's cool. That yeah. I like that. That's a good system. Yep. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I will uh, provide you the facility audits in the next. Uh, okay few days or in the next week or so. Um, I would encourage you to download it. So when you open it, um, just um, there should be a button that says download because the link is only available for 30 days. Oh, so okay. um, I, if possible, please down it, download it to your personal computer so you just have access. Okay. Or you can come email me and say, the link is expired, send me a new one and that's fine too. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Thank you for sending all that. Tori, what was your hand up about? Oh, yeah. Is Tori there? Yeah, Tori, she's there. Where is Tori? Tori. Tori's muted. Oh, Tori's muted. Is Andy Bristol still there? Yes. Wait, phone no. number. There's a phone number. No, he left, but maybe this is 
Um, well, when we get to, um, before we go to the public comment period, I just wanted to make one final comment about the transition plan. So I know I didn't give you a formal presentation on the plan itself, and I will be giving you the um, reports and um, you know, you'll go through those, but uh, what, what would you, do you feel that you need a formal presentation? And if so, um, is there information that we haven't covered that you want included? I guess it would be important for us to know about any pending projects that the town is actually going to be looking into, like the North Amherst Library is everything that, oh, they didn't do it, did they? Do what? They didn't do the North Amherst Library. They did. did they? And oh, I they provided did. their architects a copy of the accessibility report. Aha, okay. So, um, you know, they're, they're building that addition and I don't know if that necessitates anything being done to the exec existing structure or if they can come up with any money to do anything, but maybe we ought to look into what they say might be done for the North Amherst Library. It'll cost $40, I'm sure, but we should look and see. You know, sure. So that was a joke. <laughs> okay. All right. uh, should we give this person an opportunity to... There's a, a someone that's called... Oh, the person left. Uh-huh. Okay. Interesting. They stuck through it for a full four to five minutes and then an hour and a half. Okay. <laughs> All right. Does anybody, uh, is there anything anybody would like us to discuss on the next agenda? So next, next meeting. So next meeting would be March, March, what? Is today, whatever today is. Mar Nine. 9th would be March 9th and we know that well hopefully the letter for the Department of Health will already gone out mm -hmm. but we could certainly recap and yep. see if we get a response yep a public health I'm typing this down and, and we can talk about the um what was the letter about... you're going to send Myra oh, mine is about the just that we need to be consulted on the North Common when they make their decision uh, town, so it'd be a town council memo um, about the North Common. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I question whether that memo should be directed to Paul Balkelman. I think not, it should or should not. I think it should technically go to the town manager's office, and okay. you could copy Lynn Grismer. Uh, oh, Grismer. Yeah. Grismer. Thank you. Um, I think that would be the, the technical path. Well, it's, and we can copy Pat because she's our liaison. Yeah. So I'm going to say town manager, town council president, and um, our liaison. And Pat. You, okay. Yeah, Pat. Okay. And then um, I'm and then sure the roundabout. Pomeroy. And perhaps the other round, the Triangle Street roundabout as well. Um, to see what can be done in the short term about that. Um, one of the things I found was interesting. I was reading one of those articles and they said that they don't really, um, oh no, I guess it was the letter. You even sent a memo to Guilford actually, um, finding out the DAAC, he had told the DAAC that he was gonna do a study and then he was gonna get back to the DAAC about the roundabout, um, you know, about what, what, what if anything they needed to change about the roundabout at Triangle Street. And uh, he, I didn't get a response. I don't know if you did, but um, he, he, you know, the, the thing about that roundabout is if you're afraid to use it, you don't. So there's not gonna be an accident because you don't do it, you know? So it's really, it's sort of an interesting thing, but I don't know what kind of study he was gonna do, but he said he was gonna do one, right? He did in that, in that memo, it did say that. Yeah, it was in the minutes from the DAAC meeting um, of that meeting um, when, you know, when he went to the DA, it was before, I think the only people who might have been there are Tori and Saren, because the rest of yeah, us weren't on the committee then. <laughs> and were, I just cannot remember at all. I know we had several discussions on that design though, that I'm very sure. 
I can certainly reach out to Guilford and other staff and loop back to that memo and see, you know, uh, what was addressed. Was there a study done? Um, Is the town still planning to put in um, any controls there? Yeah, well, you did send him a letter and he didn't answer you yet. So um, I guess it would be good if you wanted to revisit it. That would be great. Sure. Um, Maureen, and so, Maureen yep. could you, when you talk to Guilford, find out if they actually put in the conduit that they were supposed to put in? Yeah, that's yep. what it says. Yeah, it says that it was supposed to be put in, but could you find out if it's actually there? That would be very helpful because Good that question. That's a major cost issue to try and retrofit it unless the conduit's there. Yep, I will certainly, I'm, I'm typing you. this down. Yep, will the town put in controls? Um, all right. Yep, okay. Um, so if anybody has any other ideas, um, it's not a violation of open meeting law for somebody to email me directly and tell me what they think should be on the agenda. You couldn't include Maureen on it, but it would be good for me to know too. I, I will say that um, planning staff has cautioned all boards and committees from not emailing each other and that you should be emailing um, the staff person. Can I say something, Maureen? I don't think there's a legal reason for that. What the what the council does is when Lynn sends out an email, she wants a response from everyone. She says, do not reply all. So the only person who sees the response is uh, Lynn as, as president of the council. So I think it's appropriate for members of this committee to send responses to Myra as long as she's not sharing them. Uh, um, so that's the way the town council does. So I only can speak with the with the yeah, board. This is a separate committee. So I think the committee needs yep. to decide, not the planning board for this committee. Yeah. So the planning department has um, has advised um, committees and boards that are under our sort of um, uh, uh, that 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 staff is providing. Um, assistance with is that it, it sometimes it can be sort of a slippery slope and out of abundance of caution um, where there could be, uh, of course, sending an email about uh, a site visit or a meeting time change or, um, or things of that nature are fine. But out of abundance of caution, um, I've been told by my planning director that we should um, use the protocol that I described. I can certainly discuss this with Christine Brestrope. But, it, um, yeah. but it, it's, it, I don't think there's a legal reason for that. Um, so I think, I, think, I think it's worth discussing it with her because people on the committee, you know, if everything has to go through you, right. um, Does it, make it doesn't, sense? yeah. And it also, it, it, yeah, I don't think that's the right way to do it. That, that's just how it's done with the other Boards well, and committees that are right. um, staffed well, through the planning department staff. Planning I can certainly board, bring this up to Christine Brestrup, as I said. The planning board, though, does not run or own this committee. The so, planning department. Uh, yeah. so if Myra or whoever is chair wants to receive individual responses that, that only go to her about an issue that the committee is dealing with, you can do that. Yeah. Um, so I think we do need to have a little bit more discussion about that. I think, um, and I, 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 I'm, I'm sure that it is not against the law in any way, the ethics law or the open meeting law in any way for Saren or for Tori or for Elise to send me an email that says, please put on the agenda X. Yeah. And then I would write to you and you would be CC'd on all of that. So it's not like it would be keeping anything from you, but it would be really helpful for me to know how to think about stuff. And it would just be a little more co connection from the committee so that everybody is involved in this. I'm really delighted Xander's writing this letter. Um, and, you know, I think we all, we have a lot of work to do. I think we, because we have, um, 
you know, as I said, the, 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 the schedule, what do you call it? The timeline for the Pomeroy intersection, which is a pretty quick timeline, does not even include the DAAC. I mean, it just technically, they didn't even think to put it down. So I think we need to have a little more vigilance than, um, than, we, than we know. I don't know who wrote the timeline. I'm sure you didn't, Maureen, it's not about you, but you didn't write that. You're not involved with that project. You know, I mean, maybe you're involved with it, but I'm sure you didn't, you know, put it out. Yeah, I, I, I didn't um, draft that presentation. No. It's so now I'm sure two you did. minutes after one. Okay. So anybody want to um, have a motion to adjourn? I would like to present a motion to adjourn. I will say that. Yes. Okay. Roll call, please. Uh, Myra? Yes. Xander? Aye. Saren? Yes. Tori? Yes. Marty? Yes. Annalise? I can see your mouth it. You're <laughs> muted, but I think that's good enough. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, so <laughs> March 9th and um all right and thank you pat i'm really glad you're here it's important for us to have some direct contact with the with the council especially right now i hope i can be helpful and maureen i'm not trying to be uh upstep uh, you know a pain in the butt but i think a couple of the things um we just disagree about so sure I really yeah and I, I will start again as i've said I, I i need to speak to my director would you ask chris to uh email me about it as well i will thank you so much well, Marty, so i love whatever it is that you're knitting it's beautiful oh <laughs> goodbye everybody also, we are going to hear something about the tuesday meet a thursday meeting oh, oh yeah guys, i have that off by xander oh. what's thursday's meeting i think gonna... oh yeah sorry yep yep yep, yep yep thank you okay. thank you for that reminder all righty all right. Have a Thank great you. day. Bye. 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 Bye.